Hi, welcome everybody, it's Mike Newton out here at Morecambe Golf Club in a beautiful sunshine this morning. And I've got some new products to test for you in this video and it's the Mew Mizuno T20 wedges. So I've got a little selection of the chrome finish as well as the raw finish. And this is a perfect morning because it's very dewy, we've got some wet and there's a bit of a story behind these wedges with Mizuno that they're saying they're working or keeping that spin up in wet conditions. So this is perfect environment to test that. We've got GC Quad outdoors, we've got some data to show you as well as some dry ball data from inside and we'll see exactly how these t20 wedges are performing Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the wedges first, a little bit of the technology, what they're trying to offer, and then obviously we're going to get into hitting some shots. So as I say, comes in three finishes. You've got your chrome satin, uh, which I've got here. You've got your raw, which obviously goes rusty, which I've also got here. Then they do the blue ion, which is the typical Mizuno blue. I haven't unfortunately got those. They do look pretty stunning, but that is also a colour probably for your, your real key Mizuno fans out there. So talk a little bit of technology in the wedge. These are all grain flow forged, as you'd expect. And we've got a little bit of technology happening in the grooves here so we've got a hydro flow grooving system here where the groove slight little etches in between each groove are actually vertical which releases moisture back into the groove um, to obviously get more friction actually on the club face when striking the golf ball We've then also got a spin weighted system, which is where we're seeing more mass placed higher up in the club head in this top section here, which moves obviously CG higher up the club face. That tends to then see a, a, a strike of the golf ball slightly lower than the CG, which gets it coming out a little bit lower, but obviously packing it with a little bit more spin. It also helps a little bit on consistency, as you know, saying from your up and down strikes, which is tend to see a lot of golfers will miss it, not so much left to right, but more up and down the club face on a more lofty golf club. So we've got some really precision milling happening here. So every wedge has been mechanically uh, milled. So it's a completely flat club face every single time to the to the nearest or finest um, sort of measurement in a way, as flat as it possibly can be. And then the grooves are then etched into the head from there. So very consistent from wedge to wedge through your loss and also the wedges that you purchase. You're getting exactly the same amount of control and spin and performance. And then we've got some CNC milled grooves, which are actually got little traces of boron in them. So basically helping to keep that groove or keep the groove shape for longer. So more durability through the lifespan of the wedges you're using it. Obviously those grooves can just wear off on those edges as time goes on. But this is what Mizuno's saying with that boring in there, it's just helping to protect that, keep it a little bit more solid and obviously keep that shaping for longer through its lifespan. Okay, so talking a little bit about grinds and lofts, there's there are a load of options and I'm gonna have to look at my phone to do this on the Mizuno website. So we're looking from 45 degree all the way through to 62 every single degree. So 45 foot, 6 foot, 7 foot, 8 foot, 9, all the way through to 62. I'm not sure of any other wedge company that offers a loft at every single degree, which is quite a lot. But then obviously in that, you've got some different grinds. So we've got a standard bevel, we've got a, um, an M grind, and then we've got a C grind. And obviously they're then split up into the three sort of loft sections. So you're more in your gap wedge, your sort of sand iron area, and then obviously a lob wedge there. So the sort of work in between them, you've got bounce options in between those as well. So there is a lot of options that Mizuno are offering so then it can be quite confusing I think for the um, for the standard golfer uh, probably the standard bevel I would say is going to be the more popular one unless you're looking for something very precise or you're playing off some very different turf uh, conditions out there then you might sort of move into that whether it's for fuller grind or more of that um, sort of uh, less grind in a way in that lower bounce so that's obviously something you'd have to tie into your fitter in a way or your um, local stock is to see which would best suit your type of delivery. Okay, so just before we start hitting some golf balls outdoors, just wanted to show you some dry ball data that I gathered in the studio. Um, so obviously dry ball off a mat, dry club face, fresh grooves, and these are the sort of numbers I produced. So first of all, I hit some with the raw finish, which at this point hadn't actually rusted. It was fresh out of the wrapper. So before the rusting process had actually begun. 56 degree, and obviously in the dry conditions there. So the shots you can see averaging there, 7,942 on the spin. I was just hitting an 80 yard um, sort of pitch here. So I wasn't going flat out at this. Um, so Obviously, if I went a little bit faster and produce more speed, the spin number would be um, more, obviously, higher. But I'm hitting an 80 yard, which I will be doing outdoors as well. So 7,000, just under 8,000 mark. Pretty consistent on there, on that spin number, as you expect, you know, from those dry um, sort of conditions. Obviously, my strike just moving that fractionally there um, more than anything. 
Okay, let's let's get some shots hit here. As I say, this is slightly wet, uh, sort of damp conditions. Um, it's not absolutely drenched, so I have done recent videos where I've completely sprayed it and, and absolutely went wet it through. This is sort of a bit of dewy, a little bit of damp conditions. I'm hitting some from a fair way, so the lie. I'm going to start off with the raw uh, finish first, which has just started to go a little bit rusty on that club face. It probably could do with going more rusty as its lifespan sort of um, carries on, and obviously then it starts to rust even more through through contact with the air and the damp, etc. 56 degree. I've got this in a 14 bounce. So we're going to hit some sort of smooth sandwiches to start with, and we'll just see what sort of spin numbers we're sort of creating. Just some nice easy ones, not flat out. Uh, that feels really nice off that club face. So I'm just hitting like an 80 yard sort of pitch at the moment. Beautiful sound off that club face. Very, very good sort of turf interaction there as it comes in. Feels like it's just sort of very, just smooth as that, as that um, sort of sole goes into the ground and comes back out again. So as I'm starting to hit these now, we're just obviously getting a little bit more damp, a little bit more moisture on that club face. So it'd be interesting to see how this sort of affects spin. That's just nipped a little bit cleaner off that turf on that particular shot. Yeah, feels really good. Okay, let's look at some numbers in a little bit more detail, just with that damp um, sort of club face there with a 56 degree, and then we'll move into the 60. Okay, so just a quick look at those numbers there with a 56 degree, the raw wedge, a little bit of rusting happening on the face in the wet, dewy conditions. So four shots hit there, just hitting that sort of, well, I was trying to hit that 80 yard mark, just hit those averaging 88 there, so a little bit of my distance control, uh, maybe not just quite dialed in there, but look at the spin numbers there, you can see it just ranges from that 6,800 to 8,000. Again, my strike will depend, will sort of dictate that. And obviously, you know how much moisture is getting in between it from shot to shot we can't control that it's very very difficult some will, might have a little bit more moisture might maybe cover a little bit of grass in between obviously we are hitting off grass um, and obviously my strike will change those numbers more than anything but look at it as an average at uh, 7392 for those two shots around the 88 yard sort of pitch which isn't flat out for me uh, it's quite a decent number in all honesty so that i'm quite confident that's stopping fairly quickly there descent angle you can see coming in at 49 degrees so it's coming with quite a bit of stopping power as well in that department Right, okay, so I've moved into the 51 degree actually, because this is the chrome uh, version. So gap wedge, 51 degree, chrome satin finish. So we haven't got that raw, we've got that nice sort of finish on it. Again, grain flow forged, as we've seen, it's just literally that finish that is sort of changing. So probably expecting to see this one go maybe around that sort of, I'm going to hit a smooth one here, so maybe around that sort of 110 area maybe. Uh, but let's get some shots hit, see how this performs. Again, slightly damp environment. And then just take a look at the chrome finish in the 51 degree, again in the dry uh, data in the studio. So shots collected there, again 7,501, hitting that smooth sort of 110 yard sort of shot that I was trying to hit there. So 7,500 on the spin. Again, it wasn't flat out, just hitting that sort of control pitch. But again, numbers pretty sort of tight there. Again, my strike will just move that uh, more than anything. A little bit of moisture happening around that uh, sort of, obviously around the ground. The ball's dry, but the club face has just got a little bit of moisture on and probably a little bit more so to hit through these shots. Yep, so that carried in at one, yeah, 112 yards. And that actually spawned, that particular one spun at 7,500 there, which was pretty good. You know, obviously we're losing loft, so we know loft is the biggest influence of, of spin. So less loft, we are gonna get less spin. But having said that, I am picking up a little bit of speed because I'm hitting a slightly more fuller sort of shot. Um, but yeah, that's pretty good, quite happy with that. Again, lovely sound, lovely feel off that club face. Beautiful sort of forging sort of feel as you'd expect to sort of, uh, as you expect to sort of hear really from these uh, types of clubs. Very soft off the club face. Okay, so a little bit more moisture here now, as I've just hit a couple of shots. Okay, that's a little bit clean, a little bit nippy off that bottom groove. Be interesting to see what that spins. Actually, that's dropped down a little bit. Spun at 6,100. I thought that would might just spin a little bit more with it being a bit more bottom groovy. Sometimes you, we get those strikes, we know we can sort of nip them a little bit more, can't we? So that actually drops a little bit. Distance is good at 108. Okay, we'll hit one more shot. 
that's a nice strike feels beautiful feels really nice off that club face okay let's look at those numbers a little bit more detail that 51 gap wedge chrome finish in a slightly wet uh, moisture environment right okay so chrome 51 around that 107 as average on that uh, distance mark which was trying to hit and you can see the spin there averaged at 8242 so again quite happy with that sort of number we can see some fluctuations there in that spin from that six one that was that's a little bit low in the face i thought that might spin a little bit more but clearly it hasn't done it's actually dropped a little bit um obviously up to nine seven so clearly we're going to see a difference there through my strike there and again control that moisture on the club face is very very difficult to do to get exact the same amount it's just that's the type of things you're going to find out on that golf course some a lot of vari variables through how it lies the moisture what gets in between that club face and groove on these more lofty clubs will always chuck that spin around quite a lot more but averaging there at eight two four two in those two on those four shots i've hit Right, okay guys, so there we go. There's the Mizuno T20 wedges, tested, reviewed, and I think it's a cracking wedge. Um, very beautiful looking golf club, feels fantastic off the club face. Got some finishes to choose from, loads of different um, loft and sort of bounce options to look at. So again, you've got to go and foot, maybe try these yourselves, measure your uh, angle of attack, maybe look at the turf you're sort of playing on to maybe sort of choose wisely the, uh, the sort of grind and the bounce that you want to sort of play when you're on that golf course. Comment down below, let me know your thoughts. T20 wedges from Zuno, new T uh, MP20 range as a whole. Just also want to thank uh, Morecambe Golf Club and the head professional, Simon Fletcher, let me come and film here at Morecambe. Beautiful sunny day. And I'll tell you what, you know, if you have a look at that view across the Morecambe Bay today, it's absolutely stunning. So if you're ever in this neck of the woods make sure you come and have a game so if you enjoy the videos you haven't subscribed please consider doing so hit that subscribe button ring the bell notification also follow on social media platforms both instagram and twitter and the handles there are at mngolfcoach and hopefully we'll catch up with you all very soon